Let's take a look at the Revit PMR main display. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to power up, press and hold for three seconds, and immediately you'll be taken to the main display and it's gonna show you all your data as the scope is pointed, the ballistic profile, etc. So there's a lot of information there and it can be a little overwhelming when you first see it, uh, trying to understand you know, what it means and, and why, you need to, why you need to see that information. A lot of it's just for reference. So let, let's start at the top left and I'm just gonna go over the, the different pieces of data that you see and what it means and what you can do with it. So from the top left, the first thing that you're gonna see is your profile name. So whatever profile you've programmed onto the scope and is currently loaded is going to show up in that, uh, that menu. You can have up to three profiles loaded on a PMR at one time, so you'll have to select which one you actually wanna use at that time. You could have different profiles for different ammo, you could have different profiles for you know, suppressed or undersuppressed, lots of different reasons to have multiple profiles. Maybe you like uh, skipping your scope around to different rifles as well. Now if we go to the center of the top menu, if you look through the scope, that is your battery display. And, and we've, we've calibrated that power management or, or display of the power remaining to the, the typical curve for a lithium battery. If you have an alkaline battery, it's gonna, sh it's gonna disappear pretty quick. And it, it may not actually reflect uh, the power that's available on your battery. So just be aware that the, the, power, uh, the battery power indicator is calibrated for the lithium batteries. So if we go over one to the right, so now we're in the top right of the display, this is essentially where you can see what your current pressure is. And in, in the menu navigation, which we cover in another video, you can navigate and change the output of this particular value. You can look at the density altitude, you can look at the uh, equivalent elevation for standard conditions, so it's kind of like a, a, a station elevation, station pressure elevation, or pressure elevation. So it'll give you elevation. Uh, and then another setting that you can change to is the, uh, the typical pressure setting for whether you're metric or English units. Um, I think in uh, our English units, we're using inches of mercury. So uh, those are the three things that you can see up there, but typically all three of them are describing pressure. So if we go to the bottom, there's a, a big white bar across the bottom, and that bar and that triangle are basically your cant indicator. And what you'll see is, as you start to cant, the arrow will move left and right, but you'll also see the bar uh, fade out and drop down. And uh, this is the second version of the cant indicator that we have. The first one was a little bubble in the center. And what we found was, you know, once you lined up your level and you got back in your scope and your focus on your target, if you adjust a little bit, uh, you didn't see it when it was the small bubble, but now because it's a big, bright, bold bar, you can, you can see it in your periphery and make adjustments without having to focus back on the display. So it's a little bit bold, but it does work when you are in shooting mode. Probably the most important piece of data that's there is just above the cant indicator bar. So this is uh, the next row up, but it's the center piece of data. That is our correction for the elevation turret. So when you have a profile loaded up and you're set on v BDC mode, so your ballistic turret mode, when you dial your elevation turret, the encoder is talking to the ballistic computer and it's doing a real-time solution. So that's piping that data out to your display and saying for your turret adjustment, this is where you'll hit right on. So essentially dial to the yards that you want to shoot and then your adjustments are already made. So that bottom indicator is your distance, whether it's meters or yards, uh, that's what you see. So if we go to the left of the yardage number, uh, that is your temperature. And, and it's gonna report what the sensor is measuring. Now we, t we would really like to know what the ambient temperature is outside. Most of the time your scope is going to be the outside temperature. But there's a few scenarios where that might not be the case. Let's say you are driving into your hunting area and you've got your gun inside the cab and it's really cold outside. The minute that you step out of that cab with your firearm, the scope is going to be measuring a higher temperature than ambient. So just be aware that it could be a differential and it, because it's so easy to see there, you can tell quickly if there's a problem. And if there is, then we've got the temperature override function. We've got a video on that, check it out. 
Uh, it's a really cool feature that helps you prevent you know, any uh, point of impact problems from temperature differences. If we go all the, all the way to the right on that bottom uh, set of data, now we have a, a compass heading. And what we're basically doing is telling you what direction you're pointing. So east, west, north, south. So that basically gives you a heading and the, the magnetometer inside of the scope is measuring a, a better resolution than that, but as long as you can see that we're pointing generally in the right direction, then you know that the magnetometer is working, we don't need to do a calibration, and it just kind of gives you a heads up of, of what's going on there. The last section of this uh, display is the center section, and it starts with a really big circle in the middle with a number inside of it. And if you don't have a wind programmed in there, uh, it, it's basically going to show you uh, the nominal wind value. So you've got range and yardage stuff on the left, and you've got windage stuff on the right. So if we kind of break this down, if you have a nominal wind programmed into the scope, for whatever you adjust for distance, you're going to see a, a value that you need to hold in the reticle or dial on the turret. So you'll look in there, you'll see a zero because I've got nothing there, I, I haven't dialed up, or maybe it says like two minutes. Uh, if you're on a nominal wind, you'll have arrows that show wind, WND, left and right, and that basically tells you it's a nominal wind without spin drift added on, and you just hold left and right. So that information is there, and then we can also enter in a wind vector, and we've got a video that covers that, obviously, so you can dial in a wind vector, and then that same wind output will show you the amount, but now you'll have a left or a right that's also indicated. Uh, we do have some range input information. We use the live view part of our app. We can actually put a range into the scope and it will give you a calculated value that you can dial to. That's an advanced feature and we've got a video that covers that as well. That's the information that you see in the main display and it's fairly straightforward and what you'll find is over time and over use you'll just, you'll just focus on the range numbers and you'll focus on the, on the wind output. You'll use the cant a little bit but other than that, most of the information is just for reference, so it's there, now you know what it is, and that's the Revic PMR main display.